I have a confession to make. I was born with this problem. And unfortunately, I went throughout most of my life without even realizing I had it and it ended up pouring into multiple areas of my life, which ended up affecting the way that I view and handle money. And I have another confession to make. You were born with the exact same problem. And by the end of this video, you'll know if you still have it or not. The problem we were all born with is the exact same problem that breeds every single frugal living mistake that you can ever think of, which translates to you experiencing one financial mistake after another financial mistake after another, wondering what you're doing wrong, wondering why you're not getting the results that you've been wanting. Despite the fact that you've been doing everything you've been told to do throughout your entire life, you did everything right, but you're still not where you want to be financially. And that problem we were all born with is a scarcity mindset. I mean, it only makes sense, right? What do all frugal people have in common? they save money. But the problem is in the word. The word save implies that the amount of money you'll get in your lifetime is limited, which then limits your way of thinking, causing you to operate from a place of scarcity. Now you're wanting to save with one income, one bank account, one 401k, one job. So now you're penny pinching because there's no other revenue streams coming in. So you keep turning down opportunities. You keep skipping out on going out to eat with your friends. You keep cutting stuff out of your budget and you keep living so far below your means that you miss out on the enjoyment of life. And to add insult to injury, it really only saves you pennies when you look at the big picture. When in reality, it's very possible to build multiple streams of income, which is gonna put less and less of a limit on what you can earn in your lifetime. And I'll tell you this, saying that the amount of money that you're gonna get in your lifetime is limited, that's true. That's true to an extent, because why else would you need to save? But most of us, not just the average person, not just someone who's beginning a frugal lifestyle, not just the person who's starting to save money. I'm talking about the overwhelming majority of people in all walks of life with gigantic differences in their financial situations are taking the meaning of saving money out of context. And I was one of the biggest ones doing that. I mean, I took it so far out of context that I had to sit down and make a video about it. Look, back in 2017, I went from making $10 an hour to 65, 75, $80,000 a year. And the reason that number keeps going up is because of the ungodly amount of overtime I worked. So really my base pay was 65, but I made 75, 80,000 that year. I, I, I really don't remember. But what I'm saying is my income went up significantly. And for most people that, that'll put some hair on their chest, making them think that, oh, I can splurge. I can spend money on whatever I want to. You, you're the king or queen of the world at that point. You know, I, I can buy whatever I want to because you've seen a drastic increase in your income. That's how most people think. In my case, that's not how it was. It was just the opposite. The more my salary grew, the bigger my scarcity mindset got. I could not believe what I was seeing. I couldn't believe the numbers. I couldn't help but think to myself, oh my gosh, all this is happening so fast. What if I lost all of it just as quick as I got it? That was my first mistake. If you find yourself thinking like that, you're in scarcity. That thought alone terrified me to the point of penny pinching so hard your boy didn't want to do anything. My first three months or so, I didn't eat out or anything. No fast food, no nothing. I cooked every single meal at home. I didn't go nowhere except for work, which I purposely decided to live two minutes away from, which is a big mistake, by the way. So I only had to pay for gas like once a month, if that. And I didn't do much at home besides spending majority of my time sitting around watching Dave Ramsey's videos, trying to figure out more ways to save money. And you're probably thinking, well, that's actually a pretty smart way to think about money when you're just getting started on your own. Sure, that's good until you've built such a scarcity mindset that you deprive yourself from experience after experience after experience, and all you do is go to work day in and day out. And in the free time you do have, you just spend all your time watching YouTube videos on how to save more money, which pushes you to penny pinch even more, which leads to more deprivation until boom, you're sick of it. I got sick of eating TV dinners, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and some boiled chicken and rice every day. My beverage of choice, water. Tap water to be exact. Look, I don't care who you are. When you're doing something on a consistent basis that you really don't even enjoy doing, and you actually have the resources to improve your situation, that's gonna eventually make you rebel. Have you ever eaten boiled chicken with some rice on the side every single day with no seasoning? I'm talking no salt, no pepper, no Lowry's, no Cajun, no nothing. Just bland boiled chicken and rice with a cup of water on the side. Do that for three months without making any changes in your diet, I guarantee you'll cave. Even if you don't, once that three months is over, you best believe you're gonna be somewhere in McDonald's, Burger King, Chili's, Olive Garden, and you're gonna be eating something other than some chicken. 
My point is it's going to have a reverse impact on what you're trying to do. It's just like when you when you go a month straight on three to four hours of sleep every single day that month, that one day your body's just going to give up on you. It's going to crash. You're going to be out for 12, 13, maybe even 14 hours in a row. Just not clean. I've experienced that. And that same thing applied to what I was doing. So after that phase of that three months of just cooking everything and just cooking bland meals and all that good stuff, you best believe I was eating everything anywhere and everywhere. I didn't care. Well, this is what I have to say about that. It's way too easy to be thinking like that when you can only count on one source of income. Because if you lose your job, that's it. Because if the stock market crashes hard and all of your money that's invested in one account goes missing, that's it. Because if you look at somebody the wrong way, if you say the wrong thing, if you do the wrong thing at the wrong time, that's game over. That's it. Pack your bags. No more income. Which puts you in what if mode, which drastically damages the way that you think about your money and your future because now everything with regards to your future has a limit on it. A severe limit that's much lower than what it should be. And that way of thinking goes directly against a frugal person's mindset because a frugal person is going to think of their future in a positive light and they're going to make financial decisions based on their financial goals they have for the future, not their fears. You get what I'm saying? Just like you. My financial goals and my financial future is not going to include going broke, but I'm not making my financial goals based off of the fear of going broke. Everything I'm doing right now is done with respect to what my financial goals are, and that's having multiple streams of income not just for security, but for wealth building, because within my financial goals, I wanna create wealth that lasts generations. And the biggest mistake I see is this, and this is gonna sound weird, but it's very important. The inability to realize the irony of the situation. Because ironically, when you go into what if mode, due to being in a scarcity mindset in the first place, and you hold on to every single penny, every single dollar, and you throw it into an account that gives you a return of little to no interest, which diminishes your money's growth in the short term and in the long term, which therefore intensifies the literal scarcity around your money, all because of this wonderful thing we have called inflation. So the demand and the cost of living is going up. So you're holding on to every single dollar. You're holding on to every single penny. You're thinking, I'm good. You're, you're good, right? No, you're not good. Look around you. Your money's not growing, but everything else is. That's just insane. And then you wonder why. I save, I save, I save. Still not financially ahead. I save, I save, I save. Up, rent just went up. Utilities just went up. Gas just went up. Groceries just went up. Insurance just went up. But it's okay. Because all of that money you'd unsaved, that $20,000 that's sitting right now in your savings account has gained a whopping $20. That is 0.1%, bro. The ironic thing about that is it breeds a victim's mentality. Then you start to feel like the government owes you something, like the world owes you something. Walking around complaining, talking about some, oh my gosh, I can't believe the stimulus check is only $600. You better take that $600. But to add on to this irony, I'm just gonna piggyback on what I was saying earlier on how doing something consistently that you really don't even like doing like that, like saving money, cause it's not exactly like an enjoyable process to do. People tend to give up. They tend to rebel, fold, cave, whatever word you wanna use to describe it, that's what they do, they give up. Especially if they don't like it and they're not getting the results they wanna get, they're definitely gonna give up and they're gonna turn around and do just like I did and spend money unnecessarily all the time. I didn't go too crazy, but I did invest a lot of my money into stuff that I didn't even understand, which ended up costing me $600 a month every month for like an entire year with nothing in return. Basically a stimulus check a month. <laughs> but I talk about that more in my financial mistakes videos that I made in my 20s. But that's my point. If you sacrifice improperly, meaning if, you, if you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to go gung-ho on making sacrifices. I'm going to sacrifice all the freaking time without any real strategy or plan. You're going to rebel. Because if you're like most people, mentally, you're going to need some type of reward system to reward yourself every now and then. And that's how you be consistent. That's why people like me who go to the gym, we got cheat days. You know what I'm saying? Not everyone needs it, but if nine times out of 10, if you're like everybody else, you're going to need something to keep you going and keeping you consistent. And if you sacrifice, 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 sacrifice over and over and over and over again, you're going to get sick of it. If you eat the same thing, if you wear the same thing, if you do the same things, most people can't do that. 
Then when their discipline and any aspiration is kind of broken down, this is what happens right here. This is exactly why people stop budgeting, stop saving, then they start buying whatever, whenever, then they'll get a raise at work, let's say a 3% raise, maybe even a promotion. Talking about, oh, I'm making all this money now. Oh yeah, my money's up now. I finally got that raise. And then they give in the lifestyle creep, otherwise known as lifestyle inflation, slowly but surely. Then they have a family and then nine times out of 10, the cycle continues. Why? Because it's comfortable. You know what comfortability breeds? It breeds the mindset of, oh, I'm living just above paycheck to paycheck, the I'm good mindset until their salary caps out and until inflation continues to build year after year after year until the point of the cost of living and their salary meeting right in the middle, meaning you're paying just as much as you're getting, which leaves that person living paycheck to paycheck and demanding yet another raise. And another ironic thing about that is the fact that if you wanna actually get rid of this scarcity mindset, you actually have to do things that other people don't wanna do, i.e. making sacrifices. What'd you say, you, you, wanna, you wanna build another stream of income? Cool, perfect. So in addition to work, that means you have to work before work, after work, and you gotta work on your days off to build something that doesn't even seem like it's possible to build. It doesn't even seem like you're getting any results because you've been working on this for six months straight and, and nothing. It might even take months or over a year to get your first dollar out of what you're doing and you're spending hours. I'm talking eight, 12 hours working on it. On top of that, you're also saving your money because remember, if you're gonna have a side hustle, just like the video I made about side hustles, I made two of them. If you're gonna have a side hustle, generally speaking, you're going to have to put in some type of financial investment so that it continues to expand and grow so you can actually get serious income out of it. One of those days, you don't have to put in an investment right away, but in a lot of cases, once you start putting money into it, it starts giving you money back. That's just how it works. But you know what that requires? Sacrifices. Earlier I said how hard it was for me to do the same exact thing for three months in terms of eating and in terms of saving money. And that was with me seeing the results. I still got sick of it and I was seeing the results. I saw how quick I was able to put away $10,000 and I saw how much quicker I was able to put away another $10,000 right after that. I saw the physical changes in my body and my muscle mass from eating all that boiled chicken and rice. And this is something I did every day and I still got sick of it. I persevered though. but. Imagine even longer periods of time where you're not seeing the results. You're still saving, you're still going to work, you're still spending time outside of work building this other stream of income, but you're still seeing no results. So you start to doubt yourself. You start to ask yourself if you're wasting your time and if what you're really doing is worth it. You start to question yourself as if every effort you've done to create this thing that was just an idea that is a very valuable idea that you're working on right now, you're almost acting as if that is completely worthless. You're sacrificing sleep, time, money, your social life. That's what it looks like. And the only reason I'm including that in this frugal living video is because it, it is a very frugal mindset to think about the future. I do understand that not every single frugal person out there is gonna have multiple streams of income, but there's plenty examples on YouTube, including myself, that have multiple streams of income. And I'm gonna advocate for it because it's the one thing that leads to a better financial future. The one thing that keeps you at an ease of mind. You know, it's a very good feeling to have. It's a very empowering feeling to have knowing that you have streams of income from other places. I'm just saying, sometimes if you want more, you gotta do more. And the ironic thing about that is the fact that there's a very delicate balance between working yourself to death and working yourself hard enough to achieve the desired result. There's a very delicate balance between that and you have to figure out where you fall in between that. That's the mistake that I made. I, I hadn't figured out that balance and I about worked myself to death. I didn't even realize I was making that mistake. So I figured I would sit down and make a whole video about the multiple frugal living mistakes that I've made and that I've seen other people make in hopes that you do not make the same exact mistakes. Anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.